One of the most lucrative, dangerous, exciting, and complex careers in the galaxy also happens to be one of its newest, that of an independent charter captain. Operating your own starship and taking jobs as they come isn't a life for everyone and brings with it certain challenges, but also opportunities. They say that every captain who looks out into the stars sees something different, but whatever you're searching for, space is a big place and you can be certain that it's out there, somewhere. And it can be yours if you have the will and the guts. An able captain should be adaptable, quick-thinking, and resourceful. They should be able to suss out the profitable ventures from the financial black holes and navigate both asteroid fields and local customs. In an age when the price of a brand new C-rated starship is more affordable than ever, every advantage is critical. For those who truly want to make their mark as they head out into the star field, an understanding of your ship and crew will get you off the launch pad, but an understanding of the galaxy will keep you flying. So in cooperation with the vanguard of the United Colonies, the Rangers of the Free Star Collective, and the Unified Trade Authority, the Templin Institute is proud to provide this assessment of the current state of the settled systems. As of 2330, this area of space contains roughly 1,000 planets spread out across 100 star systems. Its borders are generally said to fall within a 50 light year radius of the former homeworld of humanity and current desolate rock known as Earth. And while the evacuation of the planet was completed mostly successfully, and is now ancient history for everyone but the historians of the settled systems, not all systems were settled equally. For this reason, the exact number of planets or star systems might come down to your personal definition of what settled means. There are some worlds in which human civilization continues in much the same way as it did before the evacuation, with gleaming cities home to millions of people, influential megacorporations, and centralized ordered governance. On most worlds, though, the trappings of civilization are more spotty. These are places where the technology that keeps interstellar society running clashes headlong with the realities of frontier living. And then there are those near mythic lands truly on the edge, where the difference between a pioneer and a survivalist begins to blur. Connecting them all together are the endless fleets of starships and network of stations manned by an ever-growing percentage of the human race. Amongst their ranks are the independent charter captains, they ply the star lanes for weeks, rarely making planetfall for longer than it takes to offload their cargo or get their new assignments, with some never sitting down at all. It is a unique form of living that draws a unique type of person, for no route is ever truly safe. Environmental phenomena, equipment failure, or the ever-present threat of interstellar piracy are always a possibility. Whether you're in the middle of a run on the edge of the frontier, or in a lazy orbit over a great capital of mankind. But while it's home to many dangers, riches, wealth, and glory might also be found within the settled systems. A mineral vein on an unclaimed moon can turn a destitute miner into an industrial tycoon. An infamous bounty, collected in dramatic fashion, can turn a mercenary for hire into a respected frontier marshal. And every transport captain is just the right passenger away from making the connections that will set them up for life. Politically, the settled systems remain as divided and contentious as ever. This makes life more complicated for the average person, but can be extremely beneficial to the shrewd captain looking to increase their profits. A once-in-a-lifetime payout might come down to the simple decision of whether to take a side or remain neutral. The United Colonies is the most powerful force in the settled systems, a national government uniting its most populous, affluent worlds. The UC proclaims itself to be the natural inheritor of Earth's legacy and the legitimate continuation of its civilization. It is the center of innovation and culture, driving economic growth and scientific discoveries. The largest megacorporations tend to be based on its worlds, and its citizens enjoy a comparatively higher standard of living than elsewhere in colonized space. Ambition, determination, and merit aren't always enough to find a better life in the United Colonies, however. Corporate influences and shady politics means that lives of luxury are out of reach for most citizens, and it more often comes down to knowing the right people, having the right name, or just getting lucky. Within the United Colonies, most jobs issued to independent captains are likely to involve supporting the interests of megacorporations, maintaining order, and combating criminal elements, particularly the Crimson Fleet. The UC Navy has been mobilized to accomplish these tasks, and its fleets are on constant patrol in troubled star systems and frequently open to working with trusted local privateers. But the United Colonies also maintains the Vanguard, a civilian paramilitary open to any captain and notable for the promise of UC citizenship to those within its ranks. The capital of the United Colonies is New Atlantis, based on the world of Jemison in Alpha Centauri. The Free Star Collective is the other major national power within the settled systems. 
It is a confederacy of three planetary systems, whose only real mutual interest is in maintaining their independence from the United Colonies. Its worlds are largely poorer than those within the UC, and a greater percentage of its population exist as frontier ranchers, farmers, miners, and the other vocations natural to frontier settlement. It has a reputation for being an easier place to operate within. Many deals are still conducted over just a handshake and kept off the books. That freedom, however, has come at a price. The Free Star Navy and the elite Free Star Rangers lack the resources of their counterparts in the United Colonies. As a consequence, their territories tend to be a little rougher around the edges. Independent captains might be tasked with everything from hauling cargo to fending off natural predators or raiders. The capital of the Free Star Collective is Aquila City in the Cheyenne system. Even within the Free Star Collective, the world of Voli Alpha stands apart. Where the rest of the nation has embraced a rugged frontier mentality, the infamous city of Neon has instead cultivated a rather sordid reputation. Originally a fishing platform, the discovery of a unique fish species that can produce psychotropic effects in humans turned Neon into an entertainment hub and pleasure city. Crime syndicates and megacorporations are said to work side by side on Neon, though not everyone agrees on which are which. Regardless, Ryujin Industries is something of an anchor tenant on Neon. It is the largest megacorp to have its headquarters in the city and keeps investment flooding into Neon regardless of government priorities. This also makes Neon a principal battlefield in the shadow war between the megacorps as each seeks out talented cyber runners to further their own interests and hinder their rivals. The first lesson any captain who spent time in the Starfield will learn is that the light of civilization only extends so far into the black. Nations and megacorps might control their respective worlds, but in the star lanes, the balance of power is a lot more murky. The evacuation of Earth and the hurried colonization of the settled systems has left a great wealth of salvage just waiting to be claimed. Most of the great finds have been seized by spacers, a collection of petty criminals and thugs who might operate under more legitimate titles, but will nevertheless not hesitate to attack on sight anyone who threatens their claims. The violent reputation of the spacers and other criminal groups has led to a resurgence of mercenaries and vigilante justice throughout the settled systems. The Ecliptic Corporation has found great success as guns for hire, and is even rumored to have attacked both UC and Freestar interests when the money was good enough. In some places, its mercenaries are treated as little better than criminals or even shot on sight. Though operating in the same environment, the Tracker's Alliance has taken on a different approach, attempting to codify and bring legitimacy to the profession of bounty hunting. Though what constitutes a criminal, bounty hunter, or mercenary might vary from system to system, the Tracker's Alliance has found increasing success within the Freestar Collective, often deployed alongside the overworked rangers. For most within the settled systems, it is the captains of the Crimson Fleet that represent the greatest danger. The legendary story of their formation is well known, but it was the capture of the Key, an abandoned UC star station in the distant Crick system, that has made them a true power in the region. Once confined mainly to the Free Star Collective, with a permanent headquarters, the fleet has been able to rapidly expand their activities across the settled systems. Tales of their exploits and the immense wealth they've obtained have attracted new generations of eager recruits. Though at times nothing more than a loose coalition of criminals, bandits, smugglers, and thugs, when united and motivated under the right captain, the Crimson Fleet has the potential to be a truly dangerous organization. By all accounts, no such figure exists within the fleet at this time, but its internal leadership is always unpredictable, and major shifts in the balance of power are always a possibility. Even a captain of the Crimson Fleet might need to carefully consider whether to take a job that might bring them into contact with House Varun. Nobody knows for sure where the cult came from, but the most popular theory is that they were once a group of colonists. Their ship suffered some kind of accident, or maybe just got lost, but the strangest rumors say that wherever they ended up, one amongst their number communed with something in the dark, a great serpent poised to devour the universe. Where all their followers have come from is an enduring mystery, but they are out there. Members of the cult maintain their own distant colonies, and their adherents permeate every strata of society. Many questions surround the nature of House Faroon, but the settled systems have learned at great cost the depths of their resolve and their capacity for violence. The last institution in the settled systems that might be of note to the independent captain is Constellation, though many will no doubt be surprised to learn that the organization still exists. Founded in 2275 by the legendary Sebastian Banks, Constellation was once at the forefront of humanity's exploratory initiatives. As extrasolar civilization matured, however, and the economic incentives of exploration lessened, Constellation slowly found itself as the last organization of any note dedicated to the exploration of space. 
Though briefly in the public eye, after a few high-profile discoveries, it has declined into obscurity, dismissed as anachronistic and out of touch. Even so, captains in the settled systems claim there has been some interesting chatter regarding Constellation in recent months. In fact, it seems to have gotten far more active. Some have speculated that the group discovered something, or is perhaps just about to. Constellation is headquartered in New Atlantis, in the Mast District. The history of the settled systems is generally considered to have officially commenced in 2050, when the establishment of a permanent human settlement on Mars sparked the first practical developments of interstellar civilization. By the end of the century, a growing segment of the human population was living in colonies either on Mars or in orbital habitats scattered throughout the solar system. In 2156, just after a century of interstellar development, the first colony ships arrived in Ava Centauri. The United Colonies were established three years later, in 2159, to govern interstellar territories amidst the worsening situation on Earth. New Atlantis would become the official capital of the UC within a year of its founding. Eventually, when life on Earth was rendered extinct, the solar system became something of a backwater. The colonies on Mars, in particular, quickly were overlooked in favor of more promising candidates elsewhere. In 2167, Aquila City was founded on the world of Cheyenne by the legendary Solomon Ko. Wary of growing UC influence in the settled systems and wishing to remain independent, Cheyenne and the neighboring world of Voli founded the Free Star Collective in 2189. Its establishment created the first formal lines of division throughout the settled systems and forced the remaining independent colonies to pick a side. Amidst growing tensions, the United Colonies attempted to position a star station in orbit of Dipala, a world in the Narion system. Though the station itself was of a non-military nature, its aggressive positioning outside of UC space was seen by the colonists of Dipala as the prelude to a full annexation. In 2194, following the refusal of the United Colonies to remove the station, the entire Narion planetary system voted to join the Free Star Collective. The situation soon escalated into open war. Between 2196 and 2216, both sides fought one another to a standstill. Though outmatched, the remarkable resilience of the Free Star Collective was enough to force the UC to accept an armistice. The resulting peace treaty formalized the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective as independent, sovereign nations. The next century was marked by the dramatic emergence of the Crimson Fleet, the devastating arrival of House Faroon, and the rise of the Megacorps. Geopolitical intrigue came to dominate the settled systems, and by 2300, it had mostly subsumed the spirit of exploration that had come before. Constellation, some 25 years old at this point, was left as the last purely exploratory body. After years of rising tensions, a renewed conflict between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective broke out on the world of Vesta in 2307. The site of a Free Star agricultural commune, the United Colonies argued that by expanding outside the borders to find in the Treaty of Narion, the expansion had been an act of war. The subsequent siege of Vesta was particularly bloody, and the first engagement of what would become known as the Colony War. In a repeat of the Narion War, the United Colonies suffered an embarrassing defeat against a supposedly weaker and less unified foe. The war ended in 2311 after four years of fighting. Again, the Free Star Collective had been forced to rely on unorthodox tactics. The mass mobilization of civilian starships to serve as a paramilitary force was seen as a decisive factor in the resulting victory. The United Colonies would copy this practice, establishing the vanguard in response. But the Colony War had also seen the use of other technologies, and the carnage they unleashed was enough that certain developments would be banned by both sides following the conflict. In the year 2330, the settled systems has arrived at a crossroads. To an independent charter captain, never before has it been so accessible yet so perilous. The boundless horizons of a thousand worlds are waiting for those with the means, the grit, and the vision to seek them out. Wealth and treasure of every nature await, for more than anything, this is an era of possibility. There are fortunes to be made, deals to be struck, and challenges to be overcome. And yet, every world brings its own unique dangers. Some might merely cost a captain their life, Others might be enough to tip the balance of power that has stayed far too even for far too long. Tensions are rising again between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. Neither wants war, but that hasn't always been enough to prevent it. The attacks of the Crimson Fleet and House Faroon grow ever bolder, while violent spacers and opportunistic mercenaries thrive in the spreading chaos. Against this backdrop, an independent captain can make their mark on the galaxy like few before them. But the truly great, the legends of the settled systems, share an underlying quality. One that was present in the crews of the first rockets to leave the Earth, or the first sailors to cross the seas. 
In their heart still flickers the spirit of exploration, not merely a desire, but a need to see for themselves what is out there, to take the helm and venture boldly into the starfield. In Incoming, the Templin Institute discusses the theories and ideas found across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.